praise the Lord. Good to see y'all in the house of the Lord this morning. You stand with me. And let's do what we came to do. Let's worship him and, uh, and welcome his presence into this place today. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Oh, God, for the privilege of being in your midst, God, and amongst your people this day. We worship you, Lord, and magnify your name in this place, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship you.
give you praise, Jesus, for your word, my Lord. Yeah, ba 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 ki, ko ya la la mo she, shaka ya ba 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 ki. Oh, we lift your name on high. Oh, we magnify you in this place. Great is our God. Hallelujah. Shake ko yo ba 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 ki. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, for your presence in this place. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You know, for as much as I love all of you, I wouldn't be here if he wasn't here. <laughs> I, I hate to bust your bubble, but he's the reason I come. Uh, he, he's the reason we come to entertain his presence, to worship him. He's the reason we come with all of our needs. Do you have a need this morning? We got ginormous needs, right? If you don't have one, you're living in some kind of bubble I don't even understand. If you don't have a need, if you, if, you, if you are carefree and you don't have a need, then just look around. Look to your families, look to your neighborhood, look to your community, look to this world that we live in. We got needs. And I come here, and thank God that God just not confined to this place. It's a good thing. But there's something about when we gather together. There's something about when we, when we, are, um, we come and we worship him and we praise him and we're on one accord. There's something about us being together that, that seems to affect him in a different way. And so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning, right? We're going to take those needs. Seriously, hold nothing back. There's nothing too hard for our God. If you have a particular need this morning that you would like the ministerial staff to pray for, you can come right ahead. You can come right in, uh, to this altar here, and we're going to pray for you, right? If you have a need um, that you've been praying for time and time again, put it in the altar one more time. Keep it there. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. We're going to pray uh, for the needs behind me. We're going to pray uh, for these particular needs here. We're going to pray for those needs on your heart. Uh, look around and agree with somebody. Right? We don't even have to know in particular what each other's needs are. And we can agree together in prayer and take those needs and trust that God would minister to each of them. Let's, let's go take our needs to him this morning. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for being our sovereign God, Lord. We bring all these needs to you this morning, God, both great and small, Lord Jesus. For your word said that there's nothing too hard for you, Lord. And we believe you this morning, Lord Jesus, to minister, God, your healing to our bodies, oh God. Your comfort to our broken hearts, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, your peace to our anxious spirits, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, that you would bring us to a place a peace and harmony with you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we're lifting up our, our families before you, Lord Jesus. Minister in a mighty way, Lord Jesus. Do what only you can do, Lord. Our communities, Lord, our country, Lord Jesus. Our government leaders, oh God, we lift them before you this morning, Lord Jesus. Asking you to move in a mighty way, Lord Jesus. That your will would be done, Lord. Your will would be done, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, have your way this day, Lord Jesus. As we gather in your name, Lord. And we lift you up in this place. You said where you be lifted up, that you would draw all men unto you, Lord Jesus. We lift you up this day, Lord Jesus. Move upon our hearts, oh God. Give us that measure of faith to trust you this morning, Lord Jesus. Oh God, bring us, God, closer to you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, if we're not saved, give us that measure of faith, Lord Jesus. Let's take you out your word this morning. That we can become a part of your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we trust you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we thank you in advance, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done, Lord Jesus. Even in our midst right now, God, we thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, God, for blessings seen and unseen, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we believe you, Lord. Can we put our hands together? Can we, can we thank him, God, for moving? Can we trust him that he's done a work this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we trust you, Lord. He, God, 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 God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And while you're still standing, 
why don't you just take a few moments to get out of your pews and greet each other in the name of the Lord this morning. Sixty seconds. Three thousand six hundred seconds in an hour. Eighty six thousand four hundred seconds in a day. Six hundred four thousand eight hundred seconds in a week. 
31,536,000 seconds in a year. Tick, tick, tick. How many seconds do we get? No one knows. But we do know our time is limited. Ecclesiastes 3.11 tells us that God put eternity in our hearts. And we know deep inside that time is short and our scope is limited. And we are just a flash on humanity's stage play. Blink and you'll miss us in that grand cosmic drama that God is unfolding. Tick, tick. From the moment we draw our first breath, that countdown starts. In our youth, we count up, longing to be bigger and older, an adult in charge. But something then happens in adulthood. At some point, we realize that the clock is really counting down. And then we hide our age. And each birthday is a reminder that another 31,536,000 seconds are gone. Tick, tick, tick. Time marches forward and we can't stop it. Like sand draining through an hourglass or water pouring through our fingers, the seconds slip past us never to return. Man's days are numbered and so we fear it. We can look backwards and see what's happened, but looking forward, that's a mystery. We don't know when the end is coming, and we can't control it, and so we curse it in the dark. Tick, tick, tick. And so most of us attack it. We burn through it, bouncing from one experience to the next, trying to accomplish as much as we possibly can. After all, YOLO, you only live once. Others then try to master it. We divide it into bite-sized chunks, and we organize it, and we attempt to then micromanage it, and we pretend that our daily planner has somehow collared this feral animal that we can't predict. But time bows to no one, and our plans never go the way we expect. And then we run out of seconds, and our time stops. Hebrews 9, 27 And it is appointed unto men to once to die, but after this, the judgment. Tick, tick, stop. Rewind the clock. Imagine with me that we could somehow wrestle time to the ground and then pin it down. What if you could pause that stopwatch and halt the march of time? Then what? Imagine you're immortal. All of you, your temper, your temptation, your failure, your loss, your hurt, all of your disappointments. Do you want to live with that forever? Tick, tick, tick. Time is a gift. Time is a mercy from our creator who will not leave us broken. Yes, time is that constant reminder that our end is drawing near. But the end of what? If we are redeemed, then time is not a chain that is dragging us towards that monster in the dark, that many-toothed, always hungry, never satisfied beast of death. Time is not a curse. Sin and death are the curse. Time is God's tool that he uses to prod us towards him. And so if we give him all our broken pieces and we follow his commands, then he will walk with us in that march of time. And when it runs out, and it will run out for all of us, then he will redeem us. Tick, tick, tick. What are you doing with your time? Does it scare you? It doesn't have to. Amen. So if you would stand with me, it's time to wait upon you for your offering. If our ushers would come.
Let's ask the Lord to bless this offering. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to give into your kingdom, God, to be a part of this work uh, that you're doing here in this earth, oh God. We ask that you would bless this offering, Father, and use it, Lord, according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen.
Lord, we're looking forward to that day, Jesus, when you see you face to face, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. Hallelujah. 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 I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name. I praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. I promised you that I would never leave you nor forsake you, that I would come to you, and I have come to you in my spirit. That is what you feel in this place. Some of you are filled with my spirit. Others of you, you can have it this morning, today, here. I am willing to come and make my abode with you, to live inside of you. I am a great God. I am the only God. Beside me, there is no God, and I have come to save you. Time is ticking, but it is ticking down to redemption. And I love you this morning, and I want to take you to a better place if you will give me your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. What a beautiful presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you for contributing your worship into this place. Our worship does not bring him here. It simply turns our attention away from that which has distracted us from his always present presence. He has never left you. He's with you in your car. He's with you in your high points of the day. He's with you in the low points of your day. He's with you in sickness and in health. He's better than any friend. He sticks closer than a brother. But your worship draws your attention back to the presence of the Almighty One. Hallelujah. Praise God. So thank you for helping me this morning. Draw my attention back to the Master. Back to the One who's the center of it all. Praise the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Praise God. Well, I was all set to greet Jason and Cindy. I was all set to comment how Chad is always asking when I'm going to preach. And then I look back and find out that not only is Jason and Cindy here, and Chad is here, but the elder is here. How did I miss you, Brother Dummett? So to all of the family from Canada that we have long history and long, many, many memories of Bible quizzing that are here celebrating Ryland's graduation. Welcome to all of you. It is an honor to have you with us. 
And to those of you that are here, whether this is your first time as a guest or you're new with us, we welcome you. We thank you for being here. And if you have time, we'd love to spend a little bit of time with you in the reception room following service. Just a light snack and ability for us to chat and get to know one another personally. We welcome you. We are so glad that you're here. Thank you for spending some of your counting down seconds with us. Amen, amen. Praise God. I turn your attention to a passage of Scripture, Mark chapter number 4, and beginning with verse number 35. You can find this in several of the other Gospels as well. After a long day of teaching and ministering, Jesus, as evening came, said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon, a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to? To drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And this morning, I want to preach to you two questions. Two questions. Let me give you a little context about the Sea of Galilee and storms. Mark describes the storm in our passage as fierce. It's also described as coming suddenly. Such storms we're told our results from differences in temperatures between the seacoast and the mountain that is beyond the seacoast. The Sea of Galilee lies 680 feet below sea level, and it is bounded by hills, especially on its east side, where those hills can reach 2,000 feet in height. These heights are a source of cool and dry air. In contrast, directly around the sea, the climate is semi-tropical with warm, moist air. This large difference in height between the surrounding land and the sea causes large temperature and pressure changes. And the results of those changes is that strong winds can drop to the sea, funneling through the hills. The Sea of Galilee is small, relatively speaking, and these winds, because of its size, can descend directly to the center of the lake with violent results. When the contrasting air masses meet, the cool and dry and the warm and moist, when they meet, a storm can arise quickly and without warning. Small boats caught out on the sea are then immediately in danger. The Sea of Galilee is further complicated by the fact that it's relatively shallow, just 200 feet at its greatest depth, and a shallow lake is whipped up by wind more rapidly than deep water, where energy is more readily absorbed. An example that we may know is Lake Erie here in the United States. It's similar to the Sea of Galilee. Even though it is 100 times larger, it has the same depth of 200 feet maximum, the shallowest of the Great Lakes. And Lake Erie is especially well known for these storms that come from this moody member of the Great Lake system because the west winds easily stir up the shallow waters producing violent waves. And when this happens, even the largest fishing boats, like on the Sea of Galilee, are put at risk. This is the context this is the reality. Out of nowhere, 
comes a storm. Now, the first thing I want us to recognize in this story is that Jesus directed the crossing. It is important for us to recognize this. This was not Peter's idea. This was not James or John's idea. Jesus, after a long day of ministry, said, let's go across. And I'm sure he had a purpose on the other side, but it was not just that purpose. Some questions that I ask, and forgive me, maybe you don't ask these, but I do. But was the storm just a coincidence to Jesus' command? Did Jesus himself know the storm was coming? And the problem with answering these questions is you and I both know that in Jesus we have God who knows everything and we have God as a human who in that way took upon himself limitation. Good morning, Logan. I did not see you either. Is there anybody else I missed? I didn't say Candace either, so let me say hello to Candace. And I don't have any of the kids. And Asher, I'm not greeting you. I see you every week. Love you, buddy. He just gave me a dirty look, but mom didn't see it, so we're good. <laughs> so I don't know. Was the God hat on? Was the human hat on? And we know that that's even wrong language. Theologically speaking, he didn't have two hats. He was one being. And so that's what precipitates, in my mind, these kinds of questions that really are unanswerable. Was it just coincidental, or did Jesus know it was coming? Regardless of the answers to these questions, the third one is important to us. Whether it was just life happening, or whether Jesus was engineering this collision, did it matter to Jesus? And I think the story answers that question. He was sleeping. Let me tell you, it's not a good thing when we're told that we're sleeping on the job. That means we're being delinquent in our duties. That means we're not being present where we're supposed to be. Jesus was clearly not concerned whether he just simply didn't know it was coming in specific or whether he had engineered this collision, this crisis that was about to happen. Either way, Jesus was sleeping. And yes, this is a testimony to his humanity and to his limitations and to what happens after a long day. But it also underlines something else. It underlines that Jesus, though the disciples were having trouble with this, as we will see, Jesus was fully in control. The reason he didn't sit on that boat and worry is there going to be a wind that's going to kick up and funnel down through those hills and strike the center of the lake and pull those waters into turbulence like that? He didn't worry about it. Or if he knew it was coming, if he somehow tapped into his all-knowingness, knew it was coming, he didn't sit there waiting for it to demonstrate his power. No, he got in the boat and he said, well, I got time for a cat nap. My wife hates me because I take cat naps. I either take an hour and a half nap or I take a 20-minute nap. It's got to do with your circadian rhythms and so forth. Well, my wife takes 20 minutes to go to sleep. I don't know what her problem is, but it she takes 20 minutes just to go to sleep. It's kind of the way she does all of life, slowly. <laughs> Not me. Down, three minutes, I'm out. I just want to cite, Regina, it looks like Jesus is a little bit more like me in this one. <laughs> Maybe only in this one, but in this one it looks like he is. He's down for the count. He's on a cushion. He's sawing logs. And it's important for you and I to recognize that whether it was simply life happening and some of our crises are just life happening. There's no devil behind it. There's no God behind it. There's not even our own stupidity behind it. It's just the brokenness of our world. Or whether God actually engineered it, and I hate to tell you this, but God engineers crises in our lives. He drives us straight into the teeth of storms. And the reason is, is because he's not concerned. He's not worried 
and he's sleeping. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 tells us, gives us a definition of faith. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Faith is that bridge which connects us with the invisible, hoped-for reality. You can't see it, and all you can do is hope for it. Then verse 6 tells us of this same chapter in Hebrews that it's impossible to please God without this bridge, without this faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Two things. Everything else, there's a lot more that we believe, but everything else that we believe emanates from these two foundational pieces. If we are going to please God, we're going to have to believe that he exists. And we're going to have to believe that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. You see, in this storm, God knows who he is and has no trouble believing in himself. Jesus was not having a crisis of identity. When he got onto that boat, he wasn't worried like Regina would be or I would be about the water and do I have my fins and do I have my snorkel gear so I can breathe and what's going to happen? Is this boat seaworthy and, and, and has everything been checked out? Now, Jesus is not worried because he has no problem. God, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, God knows who he is and he has no trouble believing in himself. Not knowing who we are and having trouble believing in ourselves is a human problem. It's not a God problem. God doesn't have a crisis of identity and he doesn't have a crisis of faith. The disciples, you and I, however, are in a different place. Because the disciples are in a crisis of faith and are very afraid. They are not sleeping they are not confident. Despite even some human expertise, let me just do a little side note here. If you think you can study your way to a place of confidence or you think you can prepare your way to a place of confidence, can I just break some news to you? The more you raise your ability, the greater the storm you will then be driven into by our master. You cannot prepare your way out of this crisis of faith. You cannot prepare your way out of this crisis. And in their fear, they begin to question the intentions of Jesus. Let me remind you of verse 38 of Mark chapter 4. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? Aren't you tuned in? Don't you care? Don't we matter? What are you doing? And I don't know about you, but I find myself at times doing the exact same thing because circumstances of faith, things hoped for that cannot yet be seen, will always test our trust regarding whether God really rewards those who seek him. You see, he is a king. You see, he can do whatever he wants to do. You see, we have plenty of examples where it looks like he's not rewarding us. And yet the scripture right alongside all of those testimonies of faithfulness still says, if you're going to please God, you're going to have to have faith. You're going to have to believe. And there's two bedrock beliefs. Number one, he is. Number two, he rewards those who seek him. 
Even when the circumstances don't look like it, he still rewards those who seek him. Even when the problems pile up and it looks like he's abandoned us, he still rewards those who seek him. Even when death takes our life, we still go to that death believing that he rewards those who seek him. Without this, you cannot please So the circumstances of faith, things we hope for that are not yet seen, will always test our trust. And it did in these disciples' lives as well. They begin to shout at Jesus, relatively newly their master, not a long relationship. The long relationships, you can shout a little bit more. You got a little bit more, you know, skin in the game. You get a little bit more intense about it. They barely know Jesus. Master, what are you thinking? What are you doing? Upon waking, Jesus demonstrates that he's in control by stilling the storm. And this is usually why we use this passage. This is usually where we draw our attention to, the miraculous power of God to still the wind and to calm the sea. And the scripture describes that it was instantaneous. This was not just a cessation of the storm. Because when you whip up water, you can take away the source of the whipping and it stays agitated for quite some time afterwards. But the scripture says that instantaneously the source of the agitation was gone as well as the effects of the agitation were gone. That's a sermon. One of you preachers out there should grab it, write it down in your little notebook and go preach it. There's enough of you here. Write it down. But then, then he asked two questions. And this brings me to the primary focus this morning. I even drop off the end of the pericope so as not to distract us from these two questions. Question number one. Why? Are you afraid? Now again, you've got to remember that this is God present in the flesh. So we many times we read that and we go, well, he knew and he's just being rhetorical and we lose the sense of the question. But this is God in the flesh. This is God born a human. And in that sense, I believe there's a, there, there's a, there's a feeling of angst on his part. A feeling of puzzlement and, and bewilderment. God genuinely wants to know this morning, in the midst of our storms, why are you afraid? And I know my response would be, are you serious? You're serious. And the problem is, is that Jesus asks these questions after he demonstrates the resolution of the crisis. He has spoken, peace be still, and the waves have calmed, and the wind has stopped. But I believe this question drives all the way back to the beginning. Why, if I am with you, are you afraid? And see, if we listen to this as coming from the voice of God, as opposed to the voice of God in humanity, we can quickly move past this question. We can see it as a rhetorical device for Jesus to once again masterfully teach us. But I believe this morning, and I've been sent here to challenge you, he genuinely wants to know, why are you afraid? The second question drives to the core. Do you still have no faith? Still? 
And while I could argue with Jesus that at least according to the Markan narrative, maybe they haven't had enough time yet for the word still, you and I can hear this question and receive it with all of its force. Still? After all of the testimony of the Old and the New Testament, and after all of our own testimonies of God's provision and his presence and his faithfulness and his miracle working and the signs and wonders following us who believe, how do we still find ourselves no faith? You see, the first question addressing fear is directly related to our struggle with faith. If we really believe there is a God who exists, and if in that moment we believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him, ladies and gentlemen, we may go through trials and troubles. We may go through suffering, but there is absolutely no need to fear. This is why the scriptures say God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. There is no need for fear. There is no need for fear of loss of money. There is no need for fear of loss of livelihood. There is no need for fear of loss of life or limb because our God rewards those who sincerely, diligently seek him. When we are afraid, it is because we are struggling to believe. By the way, this is a side note. When you find yourself afraid of other humans, it's because you're struggling to believe in them. And unlike God, no human is worthy of our belief. But because of your God, you have the power to extend to the untrustworthy trust. You as a Christian have the ability to put faith in those who do not deserve that faith. Every single one of us who came to God and has experienced his redemption power, it started with somebody believing not in what we were, not in what could be seen, not in how we were operating, but they believed in that which was not yet seen, hoping for what Christ could do in their lives. When you are afraid of a human being, it's a faith crisis. It's a little more complicated to fix it because humans are not worthy of our faith. But it's the same principle. When we're afraid, it's because we're having a faith crisis about God. Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? As the Lord over this past week directed my attention to this passage, a passage that I know well from Bible quizzing, it was the first year that I actually memorized the entire material. I know this story well. Mark is still, despite being a Lucan scholar, Mark is still my default because I memorized Mark. I was laying in my bed, as I remember it, it was late at night, which is when a lot of my ideas come. My children asked me recently, why do you get so many ideas at night? I said, I don't know, but that's when they come. That's why I don't think I'm a slacker and don't feel bad of me if I don't like you at 8 and 9 and 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. Because some of you literally are rising as I fall asleep. So you're just going to have to work with me. I tried to change it earlier. It doesn't work. So I'm just going to go with it. I lay there in my bed, my wife most likely asleep beside me. And I heard the voice of my father. You see, I'm a father. My wife with me is, is their mother, and we love our children. We're going to love the day that they are adults and can run their own lives. But we have for the last 
20 years, every major decision has been made revolving around the life of my five children. I have nothing but good planned for them. I have nothing but the best for them. And I am a flawed human father. And I just sense in the humanity of God made flesh, in these two questions, an emotional articulation. Why are you afraid? Do you not know who I am? Do you not understand that everything, even in its broken state, came from me? I spoke it into existence. I maintain it. It still operates by my will and my power. Don't you realize you are my child? Jesus looking at these disciples, these disciples that he, through faith, was going to leave the gospel in the hands of. That's a scary sight. You read the gospel story, these guys were not prepared. That's why you need to understand if you're looking for everybody who preaches and teaches to you to have it all together, I'm sorry. Jesus didn't expect it and neither do I. Even of myself. I'm getting myself into spots these days that I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm doing well. I don't know if I'm doing, I don't know if I'm botching things. I don't know if they're going right or wrong. Jesus didn't seem to be bothered by that because if he can leave the gospel in the mouth of Peter... If he can leave the gospel in the hands of the sons of thunder, I mean, you talk about needing anger management classes. <laughs> Jesus, give me the go. I'll bring a missile down on them. Fire from heaven. Burn them up. No, John, I came to save them, not burn them. We can go on and on. So many of them are so broken and so flawed, just like us. Jesus didn't seem to be concerned about that. So with hope in his eyes and with faith in what they were going to become by the power of his spirit, he looks at these men. Why? This morning I've been sent to ask you, to ask myself, why are you afraid? Do, do you still they just stole my thunder. Do you still have no faith? The musicians would come, I'm closing. I'm arguing you, to you this morning that it could be said that God is genuinely perplexed by our fear and deeply desires for us to believe in him. Like a parent who conceives and births and feeds and nurtures and grows and equips a child for life as an adult, our creator our father and our mother we, we, that we've been learning about in our small groups loves us with an unending love. His mercies are new every single morning. And he desires for us to love him back and to trust him. He certainly knows your struggles and he certainly knows the source of your struggles. But I'm this morning been sent to challenge you as in the late night I was challenged by his presence. That he is also perplexed 
with why we do not in those moments of crisis choose to believe him. You can't control what you feel. But God has given us the power of choice. Humans are amazing. We choose to run into burning buildings to save others. We choose to throw our bodies in harm's way in order to save someone that we believe in protecting. Mothers and fathers spend inordinate amounts of time and money on ungrateful bratty kids. Leeches who suck the very life out of you in the hope of something not yet seen that they will grow to adulthood and change our world. We choose that. Don't tell me you feel that. Yeah, I know that one moment right after the baby's born. and, and No, nah, but that moment goes out the window really, really, really fast. And I love my children desperately, but they're leeches. It's never enough. And I choose to believe that someday... It's choice. It's not emotion. It's not reality. It's choice. God is asking us today, do you not remember I made this world? Do you not remember that I made you? You are my image and you are my likeness. Do you really think I am not in control? Do you not believe that I will provide a way of escape in a place of harm and jeopardy? You are my child. Will you not choose to believe that I am? Will you not choose to believe that I reward those who seek me? The perplexed voice of our Creator is calling to you and to me today. Why are you afraid do you still have no faith I am with you even when silent I am with you when it feels like I am sleeping I am still with you do not be afraid believe this altar's open and I'm done. Would you come? Would you reach out to him right now and let him take this where it needs to go? Would you give him the opportunity to bring this home to your particular circumstance? And New Ark UPC, collectively, we've got to hear this voice of God for us. Why are you afraid? Do you still not believe me? Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I worship you, Lord. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, in the midst of our humanity, in the midst of our brokenness, oh God, help us to hear your voice this morning. Hallelujah. There's no sin he can't forgive. There's no brokenness he can't take away. There's no need he can't meet. There's no circumstance he won't be with you in. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, wonderful God, I worship you. Wonderful God, I praise your name, Lord. I place myself in your hands. Oh, Jesus, I hear your perplexed voice. And I recommit myself to once again choose to believe you and abide in your peace. A peace that passeth all understanding, that keeps our hearts and our minds in you. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mighty God, I worship you. Mighty God, I praise you. Oh, Jesus, thank you for having mercy upon me. Thank you, Lord, for having mercy upon me, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I believe in you. Oh, Jesus, you've got to lead and guide the leadership. Oh, Jesus, you've got to get down in our lives, Lord Jesus, and help us. God, there's so many things that we've messed up. You're still with us, Lord. God, there's so many areas that are broken, but you're still with us, God. You will be with us always. You will not abandon us. You will not leave us. God, I want your will. Your will at any cost. Your will at any cost, Jesus. Whatever it takes, Lord Jesus. God, even if I'm scared, Lord, I choose to believe you. Even if I'm overwhelmed, Lord, I still choose to believe you. Even if I don't understand, I still choose to believe you. You are, and you reward those who seek you diligently. God, I rebuke the fear that enters into our lives. Lord Jesus, I call upon your angels to guard us, Lord. Put edges around us, Lord. God, I rebuke the evil one who comes with nothing but a spirit of fear. And God, I ask for your love, your power, and the soundness of our minds restored and transformed into you to be in operation, Jesus. Make us those who do not conform to this world full of fear, but let us be transformed, renewing our mind, showing us what is your good and perfect will of God. Jesus, I love you, Lord. Jesus, I praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have need to repent, you should be wrapping it up right now. Because this service, the way it needs to end, is we need to recommit ourselves to be in his presence and to walk in faith. Hallelujah. There'll be times when he's going to have to ask us again. But we commit ourselves in this moment. Lord, I lay aside my fear because I choose to believe you. All things work together for the good of those who are called according to your purpose. Hallelujah. You can work them together. You can transform them, Lord. You are able to do what we are unable to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Across this place, begin to praise him for it. Hallelujah. Yes, it's faith. It's hope. It's things not yet seen. Nothing has changed this morning except our realization that he's in control. At a moment's notice, his voice will stop the wind. At a moment's notice, his voice will stop the waves. But even if he says, my grace is sufficient, then it will be sufficient. Hallelujah, hallelujah. From the front to the back, from the left to the right, lift your voice to him. Come on. Lift your voice to him. Commit yourself and thank him. Commit yourself and thank him. God, I receive your word. God, I receive your word. I receive your word, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, how great is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a groundswell of his spirit. If you'll worship right now, it's going to come in underneath of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've got to press through your doubts right now. You've got to press through your flesh right now. But if you'll do that right now, there's a spirit movement right now. Come on, church. Please trust me. I'm not trying to rah-rah you. I'm telling you, you need to lift your voice to him right now. You need to praise him right now. 
You need to commit yourself to what he's promised. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, I believe you, Jesus. God, in this moment, I dispel fear because I believe you. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. You are our master. You are our God. You are our savior. All power in heaven and earth is in your hands. Hallelujah. 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 Believing for your children. Believing for your jobs. Believing for your calling. Believing for your family. Believing for this community. Believing for our missionaries. Come on. I choose to believe you. You are and you reward. You are and you reward. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we praise your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I trust you with my sin. Oh, yes, Lord, I believe you, Lord, that you've forgiven me. I believe you that you've forgiven me. God, my addictions, my brokenness, I choose you. I choose to believe that you are going to redeem me. You are going to set me free. You are the one. You are, you are, you are because you are in control. Hallelujah. 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 Give us the confidence, Lord, like Peter, to step out on those waters when you call us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, give us the confidence that comes from believing you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, all across this congregation. Would you reach out and grab somebody's hand? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, come on. At least one hand. I don't care if you create a huge chain, but somebody, grab your hand. If you're, there's nobody near you, get up and move. Please, go find somebody and grab a hold of their hand. And I want you to pray for one another that your faith would be strengthened. Hallelujah. There's scripture for that. I can't remember the passage or the particulars, but would you pray right now for that person who you are touching, that their faith would be strengthened. Jesus in your name. Jesus in your name. Lord, help our, help our unbelief, Lord. Lord, we believe, but help, help, help our unbelief. Come here. Jesus, in your name, bring healing to Genesis right now. God, I rebuke the sickness, and Lord, I ask you to take it from her right now. Demonstrate your power to this young lady right now, Lord. Let her know that you are God, Lord. In Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're here and you never heard anything like this, all you got to do is let your tongue go loose. Talk to Jesus and he'll take your tongue and your lips and you'll speak a language you don't understand. That's the spirit of the almighty God. Come to live not just with you, but in you. You don't need any coaching. You don't need anybody to touch you. You just talk to him. Oh, yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. That's it. Come on there. You feel that funny that thing on your tongue and your lips? Let it come out. It'll sound like baby gibberish. It's all right. It's called the Spirit of God. You will speak in another language as God gives you the utterance. Believe Him. It's a gift. You can have it right now. I speak the fear, it's rejected. Be gone, spirits. Hallelujah. You can return another day and we'll reject you then. But today you're gone. You are dispelled. You are rejected. Leave this place. Hallelujah. In the power of the name of Jesus, we rebuke it. You are dispensed with. You are gone. You have no authority in this place. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. We believe you, Jesus. The questions of doubt I rebuke in your name. I choose to believe, Jesus. I choose to believe my master. I choose to believe my master. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's some swelling up inside of you when you can't hold it anymore. Let it out. Hallelujah. There's a shout inside of some of you. Let it out. Hallelujah. 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 I believe you, Jesus. I believe you, Jesus. We are in your hands, Almighty God. You are good. You are perfect. You do all things well. Even when sickness comes, I believe in you. Even when death comes, I die believing in you. Even when, Lord, disillusionment comes, I believe in you. Strengthen our faith, mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pastoral team, I'm going to need your help right now.
don't stop worshiping. But those of you that have a sickness in your body, you might have even come down during prayer. But in this atmosphere of faith, where fear has been abated by the power of the word and by a spirit, would you come to this altar again? Would you come to this altar again? And they're going to lay hands on you and pray. And we're going to ask God for healing. If you're not, step back and you're in the altar. Just step back towards the back of the pews. If you're coming for that prayer, step to the front. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're not juicing God. We're not manipulating God. We're not controlling Him. It is simply faith. That is all we're asking for. Jesus in your name. Jesus in your name. God, I believe, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. God, in this atmosphere of belief, God, meet our need right now in Jesus' name. Meet our need now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Almighty God, do your work in the midst of your people. Do your work in the midst of your people. Jesus in your name. By the power of your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Jesus in your name. God, in your name, Jesus. Meet the needs of your people right now in Jesus' name. God, I believe you and I trust you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, in your name, Lord. God, the faith of a child. Yes, Jesus, the faith of a child. Yes, Jesus, in your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, in your name. God, by your anointing, Lord. By your power, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on now. This is not about not trusting God. This is about having faith in His Word. These signs shall follow them that believe. We trust you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, in your name. Yes, Jesus, in your name. God, we believe you and we trust you, Lord. Deliver in Jesus' name. Deliver in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Deliver in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Anything you need here today, you can step out in faith right now and call for it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Lord. God, I speak deliverance to our guilt. Hallelujah. We choose to believe you. We choose to believe you. We choose to believe you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, mighty God, I love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. It doesn't match. This is the peace. Don't rush out of this. I know we as Pentecostals aren't so comfortable with this. This is the peace that passeth all understanding, that keeps your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. This is the peace. Spirit hasn't left us. He's still right here. He's still right here. Church, you need to become comfortable in this. I'm not comfortable in it all the time because I like to be in control. What's next? What's happening next? Guy going, don't worry about it. I got it. What? What about this? I got it. This is the atmosphere in which dreams are birthed. Dreams and visions come from God. But they never happen until you have faith. can't tell you how much I believe in my children. Some of you come close because you get a little irritated with me of how proud I am because I believe in them. I don't just believe in them because of all their potential. I believe in them because I know what I have put into them. Now I understand as a human that can go to pride, but please transfer that over to God. Do you know why? We can believe in his church is because of what he's put into it. The reason we can believe in one another is because of what he's putting into us. The reason you can believe in yourself, despite all that is wrong with you and all the brokenness and all of the faults, is because he is putting it into you. And 
and I know, on a human side, me saying I knew what I was doing, that Regina and I have been intentional, and we've planned, and we've structured, and we have, can at a certain point sound like pride. Deal with it. We still did it. How much more our Heavenly Father, who has seen us from the moment of conception. He's known what broke you in sin. He's known your faults and your failings. But where sin doth abound. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. Where sin, your sin, doth abound. Grace doth much more abound. Yes, you're broke. Yes, you're flawed. Yes, you got problems. But greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. So for now, Lord, I believe. And I'm not afraid. And when it comes again, I'll try to remember, Lord. And when I hear your perplexed and maybe even somewhat tired voice saying, Steve, how many times and ways do I have to tell you? I'll choose again, despite the circumstances, despite the lack of evidence, despite things I'm hoping for but cannot yet see, I will choose to believe my master and dispel in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you one more time just acknowledge all that he's done in us today? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Again, a warm public welcome to all of Ryland's family and friends that are here worshiping with us. Thank you for coming, honoring this young man. We are privileged to have him in our midst. Thank you for being here. Lots of memories, old friends. And to all the rest of you that are guests that are from this area, welcome. If you have time to join us in our reception room, we'd love to meet with you there. God bless you. We're back at 5 o'clock for prayer and our servantship service tonight at 6. God bless you. <laughs>